Let's create the fastest man alive in Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition by creating the Flash. One of my earliest videos on this channel, and the quality definitely shows it, had me building Sonic the Hedgehog, where I got to basically twice the speed of sound, but some things have changed in D&D since then. And the Flash's tagline is that he's the fastest man alive, so I can't rely too much on that Sonic build, because that used three things we're not going to be able to use for this one. Since we're going as the fastest man, man alive, we're not going to be able to be a tabaxi to start, which would have doubled our overall movement speed once in a turn. Again, since we're going to be a human, we don't have the ability to use true polymorph to turn ourselves into a quickling, which has a base movement speed of 120 feet. So taking all of those factors out, we've got some work to do, but I definitely made up for some of those changes. So let's dive in and build the fastest man alive. And like I already mentioned, we're going to be a human, but we're going to go human variant to give us a little boost to our speed. Our base movement speed is going to be 30 feet, but being a human variant does give us a feat right at first level. So we're going to take the feat mobile. This is going to boost our movement speed by another 10 feet. I'm not going to focus too much on the background or the stats because we've got a lot of stuff to cover, but trust me, it's going to work. If you want the full breakdown of stats and stuff, just check out my Patreon where I have the link to all the character sheets. But first things first, we need to pick a starting class and it should be no surprise, we're going with a monk. Just by getting two levels of monk, we get unarmored defense. So our armor class is going to equals 10 plus our dexterity modifier plus our wisdom modifier. We get martial arts so we can just punch people with our hands and we get unarmored movement, boosting our movement speed by 10 feet. Additionally, we get key, which would allow us to do flurry of blows so we can punch a bunch of extra times as our bonus action, but more importantly when it comes to speed, we can also use our bonus action for step of the wind, allowing us to take the dash action as a bonus action which will give us a whole nother set of movement to use. However, we're not going to use that most of the time, and I'll explain why in a second. Then we could take 5 levels in Barbarian, which would give us another 10 feet of movement, and if we chose the Totem Barbarian, we could rage, taking on the Spirit of the Elk and boosting our speed by another 15 feet, but we're going to rely on some spells and when you're raging as a barbarian you can't concentrate on any spells so we're gonna ignore barbarian altogether instead we're gonna go with a wizard the flash is a pretty smart dude that so we can use that intelligence to multi-class into wizard and when we take two levels in wizard we get to choose a subclass and that subclass we're gonna go with is blade singing when you become a blade singing wizard you can use the feature blade saw and when you activate your blade song it lasts for a minute it gives you a bonus to your armor class equal to your intelligence modifier it gives you advantage on acrobatics checks, gives you a bonus to constitution saving throws to maintain concentration on spells equal to your intelligence modifier, and most importantly, it boosts your walking speed by 10 feet. But we will have to make sure we actually activate it before combat starts. Otherwise, we're going to miss out on some movement speed buffs, because after our levels in wizard, we're going to jump over to ranger. This will utilize our dexterity and wisdom we already have from our levels in monk, but we're going to take three levels in ranger, which allows us to choose a subclass, and we're going to choose gloomstalker. While the flash is not dark and gloomy most of the time, as he's usually more of a paragon of hope, we're using this more for a feature which allows you to react with lightning speed as soon as battle starts, because you get the feature Dread Ambusher, giving you a bonus to your initiative rolls equal to your wisdom modifier so you can react very quickly, and it boosts your walking speed by 10 feet until the end of your first turn. And the other nice little perk is that because of Dread Ambusher, you can make one additional attack on that first turn, and if that hits, the target takes an extra 1d8 damage. And because you have levels in Wizard and Ranger, both of those will give you access to the spell Long Strider. That doesn't require concentration, it lasts for a decently long time, and it boosts your movement speed by another 10 feet. So now with just 7 levels, we already have 80 feet of movement. And now that we have some decent base movement, let's go ahead and sort out some multipliers. So we're going to take 7 levels of fighter. Our first level of fighter is going to let us choose a fighting style, unarmed fighting. Boosting the damage of our unarmed strikes up to a 1d8 as long as we don't have anything else in our hand. And we can still use dexterity for those attacks thanks to our monk levels. Then at 2nd level of fighter we get action surge, so we can take a whole extra action once per short or long rest. You better believe we're going to use that for a dash. Then once you hit third level in fighter, you get to choose a martial archetype otherwise known as a fighting subclass, so we're going to choose Psy Warrior. This gives us special psionic powers, and we're going to take this all the way to level 7. When you put 7 levels in, you get the feature Telekinetic Adept, which allows you to use the special ability Psy Powered Leap. And when the Flash is running, a lot of times he's just kind of hovering above the ground, and we can treat this more as flying than running, as long as you stay pretty low. And this ability is also why we're not going to be using our bonus action for Step of the Wind because this makes it so you use your bonus action to propel your body with your mind, 
really tapping into the speed force, giving you a flying speed equal to twice your walking speed until the end of the current turn. So it does use your bonus action, but doubling all of your movement speed is way too powerful to pass up. And we've still got six levels to play around with. So we're going to throw three levels into Rogue. This will give you access to a feature called Cunning Action. So since you have a limited use of Psy Powered Leap, you can use Cunning Action to take the dash action as your bonus action, just for any later movement speed stuff after you run out of resources. Granted, it won't be as fast, but it's still a nice little boost. We'll take Rogue to third level, which allows us to choose a roguish archetype, otherwise known as a subclass. And we're going to take the subclass Scout. Scout gives us the feature Skirmisher. So if an enemy ends its turn within five feet of you, you can use your reaction to move up to half of your movement speed and that movement's not going to provoke an opportunity attack. And getting that extra half of movement speed just as a reaction really helps us out. And now we have three levels left to play around with. Well, we could throw some more levels in basically any of our other classes, which would give us another ability score improvement. This is a very niche build. It's all about getting as fast as possible. And I feel like The Flash likes to tell stories, considering the beginning of The Flash TV show always starts with him talking about how he's the fastest man alive, kind of telling a tale of himself. So we're going to use that idea and do one more multi-class into Bard. We'll go ahead and take three levels here, which does allow us to choose a Bard subclass. And we're going to go with the College of Spirits. When you become a College of Spirits Bard, you get to tell tales from beyond and thanks to this ability you can tell the tale of the traveler which you can use on yourself the tale of the traveler will give you temporary hit points equal to a one roll of your bardic inspiration die plus your bard level it gives you a plus one to your armor class and it boosts your movement speed by another 10 feet so now our base movement speed is 90 feet we can double that thanks to psi powered leap bringing it to 180 we can use both our action and our action surge to dash so using our base movement speed of 180 our action to dash of 180 our action surge to dash of 180 that brings our total to 540 and then we can use half of our movement speed as a reaction thanks to our levels in scout rogue which we don't get to multiply since it won't be on our turn so that just gives us an extra 45 feet of movement bringing us to a whopping total of 585 feet but all of those numbers are before we can even include any of the items that we would probably pick up being a level 20 character first we have the ability to cast a spell but we have very low level of spell casting. However, you can still use a spell scroll of a higher level spell than you can cast. It just requires you to roll an ability check. And so if we get lucky, we can pull off a ninth level Asherdalen Stride. At its base level, it boosts your speed by 20 feet, while also creating a trail of fire behind you. However, if we upcast it to ninth level, that boosts our movement speed by 50 feet. Then. Remember, you're a 20th level character. It shouldn't be a huge surprise if you manage to get an epic boon. And considering you're the Flash, you'd probably have the Boon of Speed. This is going to boost your movement speed by another 30 feet. But now, it's time for some more multipliers. So your Asherdal and Stride is going to require you to use your concentration. However, there's the spell Haste. While somebody else could cast Haste on you, we're just focusing on the things that you can use on yourself. So we're going to use a potion of speed. This gives the effect of haste, but not requiring concentration. So that's going to double your movement speed again, while also giving you another action to use. Then on top of that, you usually have some very fancy techno gadgets, and that would definitely be helpful for getting a chronolometer. Chronolometers really help for people that like to mess with the timeline. And that seems very fitting for the Flash. A chronolometer has an ability called Time Bandit, giving you an additional action on your turn and doubling your movement speed again. Then finally, you have a very fancy suit and on that suit is gonna be some boots. So we're gonna give you the Boots of Speed. This is gonna double your movement speed again. So that means your base movement speed of 90 gets another plus 50 from Asherdal and Stride and 30 from your Boon of Speed, bringing your base movement speed before multipliers up to 170. Then multiplying it by two for your Psy Powered Leap just for your turn, multiplying it again from your Potion of Speed, multiplying it by two again from your Chronolometer, and then multiplying it one more time from your Boots of Speed, your total before any dash actions is gonna be 2,700. 
120 feet. So using that as your base movement speed for the turn, you can also use your action to dash, bringing you to 5,440 feet of movement. Use your action surge to dash again, bringing you to 8,160 feet. Using your hasted action to move again, bringing your total to 10,880. Then your chronolometer action, bringing your movement on your turn to 13,600 feet of movement. Then don't forget, you can use half of your movement speed as a reaction if there happens to be an enemy that ends their turn next to you. But you don't get the Psi Powered Leap Multiplier. However, that still brings your total movement for the turn to 14,280 feet. And since a normal turn in D&D 5th Edition is 6 seconds, that's 2,380 feet per second. That means you're already twice the speed of sound. But we can still go even further beyond that, because you do plenty of team-ups. Whether it's the Flash TV show with all of your backup, or being part of the Justice League, there's going to be a handful of people on your team. And if you have at least five people in your party that are all willing to help you out, we can boost your base movement speed up a considerable amount. The first thing you're going to need is a Graviturgy Wizard on your team. They have an ability called Adjust Density. This is going to boost your movement speed by another 10 feet. Then you need an Artificer that happens to be specialized in Alchemy. An Alchemist can make experimental elixirs, and they can make an elixir of swiftness. That'll boost your movement speed by another 10 feet. Then make sure to have another Wizard on your team that happens to be focused on the score school of transmutation and get a transmuter stone that boosts you by another 10 feet. Have a bard that cheers you on that happens to be part of the College of Creation. They can make a dancing item that has the power of irrepressible dance, boosting you by another 10 feet. Then you have to have a paladin that's searching for glory on your team because a glory paladin has an aura of alacrity, boosting that speed by 10 more feet. With all of those in place, your base movement speed before any multipliers is 220 feet. Once you start activating everything, it really goes over the top. Let's turn on our Psi Powered Leap, our Potion of Speed, our Chronolometer, and our Boots of Speed, bringing our movement speed to 3,520. Then we use our Action to Dash, bringing us to 7,040. Our Action Surge to Dash, bringing us to 10,560. Our Hasted Action to Dash again, bringing us to 14,080. Then our Chronolometer Action to Dash again, bringing us to 17,000. 600 feet and then if we get to use our reaction from being a scout rogue we get to add the base movement speed without the multiplier from psi powered leap cut in half bring us to a total of 18,480 feet that is over 3,000 feet per second we're pretty close to three times the speed of sound and if you want to be the fastest man alive that's pretty much the best you're gonna do if you wanted to go ahead and use the multipliers that i originally used in my sonic build you wouldn't have to necessarily stick to being a human. And just for the sake of argument, that would make it so you get to be a tabaxi, allowing you to add another multiplier overall because they have the ability to use feline agility, doubling their movement speed one more time. And if you had one of those wizard cast shape change on you, they could turn you into another creature altogether called a quickling. And a quickling has a base movement speed of 120 instead of just 30 from being a human. So if you were able to go ahead and use those two to mix in, just so you know, your base movement speed even before multipliers is going to be 310 feet. But after multipliers, you're going to get 9,920 feet. So if you use your action to dash, that's 19,840 feet. Your action surge to dash again, that's 29,760 feet. Your hasted action to dash again, that's 39,000. 680 feet your chronolometer action to dash again that's 49,600 feet and then without the multiplier from being a tabaxi and without the psi powered leap because both of those are only usable on your turn you can still move half of your base movement as a reaction thanks to being a scout rogue bringing your grand total up to 50,840 feet. That is over 8,400 feet per second, which is considerably over seven times the speed of sound. This was a hell of a lot of math and spreadsheets for me to go through. So if you appreciated this build at all and you like D&D builds in general, make sure to subscribe. It really helps the channel. And if there's anything I missed or anything you do differently to try and build an insanely fast character, let me know in the comments down below. Because basically with how fast you can move here, you can pretty much just start combat and sprint back to the nearest city to ask for an entire army's worth of help by dropping off a little note and then running all the way back to the battle to help out. 
Only downside is that you're going to be lacking in some ability scores, so you might want to be a little extra careful. If you want access to the character sheet for this build or any of my other builds, feel free to check out my Patreon. I will have both the character sheet for if you're doing this solo, as well as if you want to have all of those items included up on my Patreon. And my patrons are pretty darn awesome, especially my player character patrons, Kevin Shirley, Dylan Meyer, That Funny Man 57, Joshua Maynard, Derek Owen, CGC 2014, Afstorm, Godzilla Khan, Lisa Martinez, Panda Milkshake, Ted C, Andrew Nobles, Karkat Kitsune, Z13, Viral Narivar, Daniel Galvin, and the Dino21. Then going above and beyond that are the Dungeon Master level patrons that I actually play D&D with, Shane Gilroy, Conman ZX, Cyber Society, Talon Starkey, Demiurge, Brayden Aldrich, Eric Wade, Salvador, Devin Happy, and Kilo Kilo. Then going above and beyond anything I ever expected is my god tier level patron, Gamestake. He helps me to an insane degree, so I want to give a very special shout out to him. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, let me know by hitting that like button, and I'll be here helping you roll these three nat 20s in your next D&D session, especially if you want to be the fastest man alive in D&D 5th edition and play as the Flash.